name's Steve. I'm here with David Wright, who is a personal trainer at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. So I love to motivate people to make a difference in their life. And you not only got fit and healthy, we started off last time we talked, you kind of said, you know, it was kind of by accident that it happened because it was a financial issue. Um, and then you wanted to, to stay fit, but now you've gotten to a point to where you want to, you want to have maximum health and fitness. And that's why you do bodybuilding shows. So, yes. um, just take me through what did, was the motivation there to help you have discipline by doing shows, it's keeping you disciplined and giving you timelines. But what was it that said, okay, I've gone this far in my fitness level. I want to take it to the next level. I want to do shows. Walk us through that process. Yeah, so for me, um, it, it was something that I definitely never imagined or even thought of for myself. Um, kind of as we talked about before, you know, I, I'd never been into a gym until I was in my late twenties to begin with. And so, um, for me, I had gone to a gym. There was a particular trainer there who had competed. Um, I'd heard about the Tahoe show. Um, and there were some other bodybuilding shows in our area here in uh, Northern Nevada, uh, at that time. And so I went to go watch one again. I'd never even had anything to do with them, never watched one or anything, but I thought, you know, there's some people that are at this gym, they're going to go and compete. One of them was a friend of mine. So I said, well, you know what, I'll go watch support that kind of thing. And, and I went and watched and I went, wow, you know, I saw the, the men's physique competitors and, and the bodybuilders and all that kind of stuff. And I went, wow, that's, that's interesting. I really didn't give it much more of a thought after that until, um, and then this was 2015. So it seems like a long time ago now, but, uh, um, was working out the same time as one of the trainers who was a figure women's figure competitor, fantastic, uh, personal trainer, by the way. Um, and, you know, just started kind of talking to her about, you know, the shows and what I, what I saw and that kind of thing when I went to the show and she said, Hey, you know what, you know, why don't you do a show? You know, you're in here practically every day. You're, you're working out hard, you know, so you look like you have the discipline to maybe do something like that. And, at first I brushed it off because I said, well, you know, in my mind, I'm not that kind of person. Like I wouldn't want to go walk out on stage, be judged, all those types of things. And, and so for me, it was like an idea that went kind of in one ear and out the other. But, um, the more she kind of talked to me about it and I said, you know, I don't know anything about any of this. I just know how to go buy a ticket and watch the show. So, you know, she offered to kind of help guide me through some of it. Now it wasn't down to the point now where I have my coach who does meal plans and all those types of things, but it was some general direction. And then for like the peak week, which for those of you who don't compete in bodybuilding, that's the week leading up to the day you st step on stage. So the whole week beforehand is called peak week. You know, she guided me through kind of how to eat, when to work out, when not to work out, you know, what, what that looks like and help me along there. She did, you know, body fat measurements uh, with the, uh, with the tape at that time, they didn't have a 3d scanner, like we're going to have here in a couple of weeks, but, um, you know, helped keep track of things like that for me. Um, and if it wasn't for her, I probably never would have even considered it. I may have watched a couple more or maybe not. Um, but once I went in there and, you know, got my spray tan on and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, but, but the exciting part for me was, okay, I'm actually doing this. You know, once I, I paid for my entry, I paid for everything you know, there's no turning back now. Now, granted, I did want to turn back because um, I was not the extroverted person who wanted to go and just you know, flaunt everything on stage and just walk out there super confident. Similar to people when they walk into the gym for the first time, I'm walking onto the stage for the first time going, I have no idea, you know, what, not in no idea what I'm doing, but no idea like what to expect when I do it. Um, I also hadn't done a lot of posing practice, which is a huge part of uh, classic physique, which I'm in now and men's physique. So you really have a lot, there's a lot to a show. So I, I, I did it, I went on stage, I did the best that I knew how to do. Um, and from that point on, you know, I didn't place or anything like that, but again, my first show, so I didn't know what to expect. But from that point on, I said, you know what, I, 
I liked the challenge. So to your point, like people thinking you're kind of strange because you think this kind of stuff is fun and, and all that. I think that that challenge is is really fun for me. Um, you know, new challenge this last year going into classic physique. That was something I definitely never thought I would do. Even as a men's physique competitor, completely different world. You know, there's a lot of different more uh, different uh, poses, and there's a lot of, you know, there's a there's a routine to music and stuff like that. I am not musical in any way. Just FYI out there. Um, so for me to have any kind of routine to music was probably the most frightening part of it. Posing, you know, was was different. So this time around, you know, I, I just kept getting more and more excited from show one to show seven last year. Um, more excited on the challenge, the changes that my body was making every single time I stepped on the stage. And like you said, yeah, there are competitors there, but you're really competing against yourself. And that's that's this year what I'm doing is last year I looked the absolute best I've ever looked by far, did really, really well for, especially for my first time in the division. This time around, I know what to expect on both sides. So men's physique and classic physique. So I'm going there not only to to do it, try it, do my best, I'm going to do my best and I'm going there to win it. And so, you know, that's something that my coach and I both really looked at and, and figured out a plan on how to get there. It must have been so daunting, like overwhelming when you first went to that first show. And that's probably maybe where you lost some weight, but had a lot to go. I mean, did you think that is so much work that is that even possible, but you're a person that likes a challenge, but because it's been 10 years now of focusing on this competing and so on. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's very slowly. And most people don't have the patience for that. But what were your feelings about, you know what, I can do this. I'm willing to put 10 years into this. What, what were your thoughts about? And, and also relate it to the people that are listening. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people listening to us are not competitive bodybuilders or do any type of physique shows or don't compete on stage at all. But we want them to compete with themselves and to feel as good as they can be uh, and be as healthy as they can be and look as, as good as they can be. And it's fun. And it, it gives you really a, a lot of satisfaction and it doesn't matter. Most people out there aren't going to get to perfect, but they can get better. And when they get better, they feel a lot better about themselves. So did it seem, cause I think a lot of people who are maybe a hundred pounds overweight, at first, it just seems so overwhelming and they don't want to try because it seems like so much work. Did it seem like a lot of work for you? And how did you get over that first obstacle of, hey, I'm going to do this and I know it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of discipline. And I'd say it's more discipline even than work. You know, you've got to be disciplined to, to be healthy. I mean, even the 60 year old plus guy like me, I got to be disciplined. I mean, I don't have perfect discipline. You know, I drink a beer once in a while, but I have to be disciplined to be healthy. That has to be a priority in my life. So what were your thoughts when that person said, why don't you do a show? I mean, did, 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 what started racing through your mind about how will I do this? How much work is that? What were your, um, just thoughts about the process and what it would take when you first heard that. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it was, it was really overwhelming for me to be completely honest. Like I said, um, for a big majority of my life, I was more of an introverted person um, talking to people when I needed to, but if I didn't need to, Hey, I was, I was good with that. So even in the gym, you know, back then it was, I was there, I was focused on me. I was, I was not trying to, to build relationships or, or, you really even look at what other people are doing and maybe going, Hey, I want to do that. So when, when the idea, um, was brought to me by the trainer and, and, you know, she came with it, I go, yeah, I don't even know, you know, what does that entail? What does that look like? So we had several conversations afterwards, you know, talking about, Hey, I'm going to send you to this other person for posing lessons. And I'm like, Oh, great. What is, what does that entail? You know, because now I know that I need to 
track my food and I know that I need to obviously eat better. <clears throat> and I'd already started doing that and had been doing that for a couple of years. You know, I'd gotten a lot better with my nutrition, but, you know, trying to understand, um, you know, what the nutrition looked like from there to the show, which I think was, you know, 12, 16 weeks, something like that out at that time. Um, then going, oh, great. Now I have to go and I have to learn how to how to present myself on the stage. So you have to learn how to do the posing and then going, okay, well, now I have to make sure when I get to the show or when I purchase my, my registration, I have to make sure I get tanning and how much tanning. And, and you know, then, then you get to the point of, well, then you have, you have to be there at a certain time for like the competitor meeting and then be there at a certain time for tanning. So there was so much information. So relating that similarly to someone who's coming into the gym and maybe is a hundred pounds overweight as an example. And, you know, they're hearing information of, well, you, you've got to eat perfect and you've got to do all these different workouts and you've got to do them all right. And you've got to work out this many times a week and know all these things. It's an overwhelming feeling. And so for me, when I was even considering doing a show, it was like, okay, information overload. How do I, how do I stop kind of being overwhelmed by all this and, and just lay it out and say, okay, what is it that I need to do now? And, and I'm a big planner, Steve. So for me, I, I, I can map it out and just even writing it on a piece of paper, you know, or in these days, putting on a tablet, a phone, computer, whatever is, is comfortable looking at it and going, okay, here's all the things that I, that I've heard that I need to do for my, for myself at that time. Okay. I need to eat X amount of protein. I need to work out X amount of times per week for 45 minutes or whatever the case may be. Writing that out and then going, okay, this is not as overwhelming as all the thoughts that are going around in my head because now I've laid it out so I can see it in front of me and go, okay. So if I need to go and see somebody for posing, okay, I need to get a hold of that person and say, okay, when are you available? Set those times. You know, when I get to that posing person, okay, how many sessions do you think we need to do? So then I can kind of add that into my knowledge that I know, hey, now I'm going to see this person once a week. Um, unfortunately for me, one of those mistakes I made during that first show is I only went to like two to three posing lessons and thought, gosh, you know what? I know all about this stuff now. I'm good. I wasn't. Um, I've learned a lot about that now. So now it's a lot more practice. But I think for people coming into the gym or, you know, any environment like the gym, you know, wanting to get healthy, not necessarily wanting to do a show or ever even going to do a show in their life. Majority of most people won't. There's a very small population that does. But if you're just wanting to get healthy and you're wanting to, you know, get yourself feeling better, one of the things that I suggest, you know, and what I talk about with my clients is, you know, we go step by step. Okay, let's get you in the gym. Let's let's show you some things that are going to help you be less intimidated being here. We also talk about the nutrition part. I get an idea of what they what they're currently doing. And I don't say, okay, cold turkey, forget ever throw everything out of your fridge and your cabinets. You know, you got to buy all this other stuff. Absolutely not. Incremental steps are what's important here, because if we try to do everything, there are some people that could just start everything and be like, great. I threw everything out of my, my cupboard and you know, there's no cookies, there's no anything. And so now I'm just going cold Turkey. And that's some people might be able to do that. Majority of people are not going to be able to do that. It's going to work great for the first week or two, maybe even a month. And then it's like, we just kind of backtrack. So for me, it's like, what is my goal? If I'm going to come into the gym and I'm going to eat healthy, what does that look like? So I'm not overwhelmed trying to understand and then also talk myself out of it in my own mind as to why I don't want to do it. And I'd rather do this other thing, write it down. And, and that's, that's really how I got to where I am now. Now I have the idea in my head, I can look at my meal and, and know for the most part, you know, by judging it, does it have enough protein or the carbs the right amount? Like how many times a day am I eating all those things, but it takes time to get there. So I think people have an understanding or misunderstanding really, that you know, it's really easy to do and it's going to happen overnight. But if we set the expectation at the beginning, like I do with my clients, we're going to start off at a place where I know your skill level is, we'll build from there. And that's where your progress, you know, takes place is during, during those incremental steps that we take together. And, you know, just so you all know out there, there's people that compete in physique shows over 70, right? They oh, have yeah. categories and that's really cool where the categories, there's competitors over 70. 
not only in physique shows, but in other weight lifting type shows like powerlifting, mm -hmm. you know, um, seniors and people that are older than me doing that. And I just, yeah, I know it's overwhelming because, you know, you talked about the posing and last thing I'll say real quick is that you have to learn how to count music. Now, if you're not musically inclined, you know, nothing. you're going, you're going, what's that? Right? No, you have to count it. You have to know how to count music. And I don't even know what I'm talking about. I mean, I learned how to do it. Through, I first learned how to do it from a boss who told me I'm going to go teach a, they called it aerobics back then. You're going to go teach that aerobics class. I, go, I don't know how to teach aerobics. I didn't know how to count music. Oh, she was so mad at me. I go, why are you mad at me? I told you, I don't know what I'm doing. So anyway, she taught me how to count music and I got decent enough at it. So where I didn't get laughed at when I taught aerobics, now it's called group fitness, but just something simple like that. You have to learn how to count the music in your head and know where the beat is and all that, or you can't pose to it. Uh, so it is overwhelming, but it, it is a challenge. So, um, David, we, we, I want to talk more about, you know, what you do with your diet and your protein, but, uh, we'll sign off right now. So, um, if now David is a personal trainer at Fitness for 10, if they want to follow you on social media, how do they do that? Yeah. So, um, I have an Instagram page specifically for fitness training. So it's at right fitness training. So W R I G H T fitness training all together um, on Instagram. And that's uh, where you're going to see some training updates, my boot camp that I have here, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of good content. And now are, do they also see your progress for your shows on that channel? So I will be sharing it on that channel as I go along. Um, I do have my own personal Instagram, which does show the you know different changes, also has photos from the different shows that I've done as well. Um, and then that one is at David Wright underscore fitness. So both of those pages, I, I have links to the pages there, you know, for the personal and the business training page. So follow those both, um, get updates kind of on what's going on here at Fitness for 10 with my clients, myself, different training things, boot camp, all that good stuff, but also the other for my personal progress and fitness uh, training and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I follow that one. I, I'm seeing the progress and the before and after pictures and that, that's just fun. And I think it's motivational for other people to see the progress. So uh, that's where you can be followed if you guys uh, you can see also in the description of this video, my affiliates, if you're looking for TRT um, and or uh, peptides, there's Invigor down there, Invigor Medical, um, Primal Kitchen, all things that I use and that I'm very passionate about. That's the only thing that's in there. And uh, you know how to follow David. So, uh, David, thanks for being with us. Thank you.